credit to them. They defended really well. Um, some of our big ball carriers got tackled backwards. Um, but we'll be back. I mean, I, I, I know, I know. I mean, it's, uh, it's tough, probably tougher for me because as I get older, I start to work those things out in my head. Um, but we'll be back. I mean, I, I know that uh, I've really marked we playing Glasgow away. I really know the date. And uh, yeah, that's that's all I can say is that there's no way that I can come here and make you feel, and I'm going to tell you anything that's going to make you feel better. Um, I'm asking this because it's going to come up with the way that um, there may be people that say that perhaps you guys played your final last week. Yeah, um, well, I told you yesterday, Jeff. Um, they played Munster. Um, and they beat the team that was top of the log. And it's twice in a row now where the referees let the away side win. In fact, it's three times. Because last year, Munster won in Cape Town. Glasgow won in Munster. We won in Leinster. And this referee let the away team win. So maybe next year I'll ask when we play away. And I want him to try and work us. Jake, just um, I know I know it's also still very emotional, etc. But um, you guys really missed Vinny today, especially at the back there as well. Yeah, look, I mean, I thought Devon was outstanding. I mean, if he had just chipped and chased there, probably would have scored as well. Yeah. And I'm not sure Vinny would have made that line break either. Um, but we missed Vinny because when you play in these in these games is, is what I said to you just now. Every reserve that came on for Glasgow's in international. And when you've got a guy like Billy, who's been there, done it, 93 tests, two World Cups, you can't check that away. Um, so I know it sort of looks like I'm at this press conference and I'm really, you know, I'm sort of trying to get you guys to understand that there's nothing I'm going to say that's going to make it any easier. You know, we lost away to Stormers, we lost at home. Um, I don't think I don't think it's you know as I said I don't think it's anything I can say is going to make it feel better. I myself, you know, lost the Super Rugby final in Chiefs, lost the Rainbow Cup in Benetton, lost two URC finals. So I'm probably going to have to have a look at. What I have to do as a, as a coach to, to try and get over the line, and uh, yeah, I don't know what it is yet. I mean, I'll wake to up tomorrow and I'll have a look and I'll and I'll think about it. And but I also want people to understand for what they've achieved this young group of players in three years to play in three finals and a, and a quarter final last year. I can't rush the goal. I can't make it any quicker than what it is. I mean, you've got guys like Ulrich and Cameron and David Creel, and, and they're young. They're very young. And uh, and that Glasgow team, they've got a lot of guys who are internationals. The whole pack played in nationals, and then they play Six Nations against England. They play Six Nations against France. And they, so they they probably a little bit more a little bit more seasoned, a little bit more aware of, of what's happening. And and the margins are small, you know. Had we stayed in that mall just before half time, we get a penalty, we take it over 16 all up, and, and I'd be sitting here telling you a different story. So as a coach, as a guy who's been around, as a guy who understands, um, all I'm disappointed for them is that. It's like you have a chance and you you don't you don't take it with a hundred. Not because they don't try, not because they not because they point fingers at. You know, I look at a guy like Good Quirson and everyone says he missed touch. I kicked about twenty kicks over this year that got us into where we were. And the ironic thing is if he kicks that thing out five meters from the trailer. And everybody tells me, geez, guys, that's uh, that's incredible. So, yeah, Brendan, I, I 
I, I want you all to understand is it's not nice, but it's not a it's not a great feeling, and it's and it's and it's something that that we're going to have to learn. But I can promise you, we can take this to the bank. That we'll be back. Uh, hi, Jake. I'm sorry for the result. We all feel for you. Um, following on what you just said, do you maybe think it was maybe a big moment for your young players if there was a lot of hype in this town this whole week? Yeah. You had all these legends come to talk to them. Yeah, yeah. Do you think maybe the moment for some of them were, was a bit too big? No, I don't think so. I don't think. I mean, you could taste Lawrence and trip to prayer. Like his and those guys. I don't think that ever can count against you. Um, you know, they, they didn't they didn't officiate them all. So, I mean, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So, I, I mean, we got to use whatever we can. There's a lot of history in this club, and uh, we would have been the first club. And I know it sounds we would have and could have and should have. That would have won in the South and the Northern Hemisphere, and that says a lot for a club like this. Um, but I, you know, I, I wouldn't have changed anything. I wouldn't have not brought them in because I was afraid that that would be overkill. Um, when you have when you have the resources of what you have with guys like Tace, and I say Mr. Lawrence and Mr. Fripprier and. And a guy like Bucky who carried the trophy out, then you'd be crazy not to use that. that. Um, but you know, I uh, yeah. So I suppose what I, what I'm saying is I, I can't I can't blame the fact that we we thought using those guys would be a massive motivation. Um, and they wouldn't have helped us in the 39th minute to give a penalty away. You know, in their 22 or just outside their 22, which they ended up converting. Um, into seven points. So, yeah, I, I, there's nothing I'm going to tell you tonight that's going to make you feel any better or make me feel any better. It's, but I, I, yeah, one thing I will tell you, we'll be, we'll be back after two years, sorry, three years, two finals with a group that we started with really inexperienced. And I, and I have to reiterate, David Kill's still a youngster, not even the Springbok squad he played against. Two guys this week and last week got are both international. Errol Foster's not international, played against two guys internationals. Cameron Hanekom played against the back row last week that was seasoned internationals. Um, so my my job is to make sure that 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 they this time that next year they're ready. We, we would have we would have been we would have been double champions in two years with the team that started from zero. So I can't sit here and go, ah, oh, you know, the world's ended. The thing that hurts me is me. It's me because because of the fact that we, we've had so many finals. Me. I'm talking about not them. I just wonder if I'm missing a trick and I'm going to have to find out what that trick is. Um, and that, that, again, is a... Is a, is a yeah, it's a it's a it's a checklist that I'm gonna have to work out because getting to the final line and not getting over the final line. I mean that game in the last mall, I don't know, but there were more guys on our side of the mall than there were on their side of the mall. But you know, that's that's what you have to accept. That's what you have to the margins in a tournament like this are so tight. I mean lucky enough to sit in a press conference and win a World Cup. And I know, you know, was was Dan Quater was was Quater out in that corner, or did Donny Russo tackle him in that corner? So sometimes, as an older guy, you learn you have to take the good with the bad. Yeah, Jake, commiserations on on the result. Um, we're all behind you. But quick question, you, um, Luke Caleb, Yaga, Caleb. Dwayne, yeah, Caleb. I didn't yeah. say Caleb. Yeah. I said Kenneth. Just oh, on, I thought please. I heard came. Sorry, sorry, Lunga. Sorry. Thanks, Ken. Uh, hard line, Shag. Um, the second half, it, it definitely seemed like Glasgow had almost like renewed energy. They 
they really came out and, and hit you guys hard. Do, was that just the effect of scoring just before half time? Or do you think there was some other reason that, you know, they seem to have more energy than your guys? Well, I think firstly, they got a bit of a, they got a bit of a boost when they scored just before half time because they would have gone in either 13 all down or 16 all down. And to be, to be fair, as I said to you guys, Devin Williams chips that thing over. He scores with 20 points up when the game's over. I can tell you right now when the game's over. Um, so they would have got a leg up there. Um, but their bench, their bench also. You know, I can't, I can't knock any of our players. I mean, we don't have the bench. I can't put on five internationals when the pressure's on. Um, and in rugby is all about momentum. You know, as I said to you, we scored there with that little chip kick. Embraer's got a tackle from behind, and, I, and again, legally so. But I haven't seen too many guys catch Embraer's when he's put away like that as well. So. You know, that could quite easily have been 28, 28, I don't know what it was at that stage, but it could have quite easily been game over. And those are the margins that, you know, that determine these sort of outcomes. Um, so a little bit of both, I suppose. They got a bit of a leg up there and they got a bit of belief. Um, and then they used their bench quite wisely. And I wasn't. Probably I wasn't I wasn't comfortable and, I, and and again you might say why because I just thought if we scored the end then we missed the kick it's twenty five all then, I, then at least I've got a bench to play in injury time they would have had nobody so it was a bit of a a call by me you know um, because I've been to a World Cup and I know what it's like you go into injury time you've got no more reserves left you could be in trouble so I sort of held back on the reserves based on the fact that if we get over the line and we miss the conversion it was twenty five all. Um, and I've got to be clever enough to know that I can use the rest of my bench. Um, Jack, the other, the other thing about that 39th minute was the line-out was a, a very elaborate line-out. Um, it, was probably, it was probably too elaborate for the yeah, guy to make the call. That's, that's what I'm getting at. Because, But now, was that a result of... I mean, Glasgow really contested very hard um, in your line-outs. Um, yeah. Did that, oh, was that a big factor for you guys? No, a big factor was just before half time when they were pulling us backwards on our way to the trial line. It was a big factor for me. Jake, we, we talked about the last week, we talked about a few, few things that must happen in the playoff games and finals. Um, taking opportunities, we talked about the first half. The opportunities not, not taken, but there was other opportunities that you uh, I asked Ron the same question. Um, you uh, you chose to go for for the line out. Um, you won a World Cup of, of five penalties. Um, yeah, I mean, is, uh, if if he, if he went to the polls, the, the difference was six was well, five points. Chris, I want I want to help you with that. We went for the polls in the World Cup in two thousand and seven. And then when the 2019 box won by scoring two tries, everyone praised them for the fact that they didn't go for balls. So it's always easy in hindsight. And the ironic thing is we went for balls and then Alric dropped the kickoff. So maybe we should have gone for corner there and gone and scored. So I, again, I can't blame anybody. I can't go... Should have gone for the corner because the reality is you can never ever rewind what happened there. I mean, how many times have you guys seen Ulrich Lowe drop a kick off this season? And then it wasn't just a drop, it was a penalty because he played it and then they got a kick and a score. So uh, they, they'll learn. They'll learn. I'm going to tell you guys something. You must, I'm going to sit here again and I'm going to tell you. You can't fast forward experience. And you can't fast forward age, and you can't fast forward um, buying time in those positions. And I'm fully convinced, as much as it's not nice, and as much as it's not what we want, 
we will, and I can tell you now, we, we will be back. Uh, Jake, congratulations on the result. Um, you mentioned quite a few things. You mentioned international experience. You mentioned um, know-how, things that the Glasgow Warriors bench were able to bring onto the field. When you look at that, do you maybe then look at, it, at the decision you made on Marcel Kutsia not being on the bench? If you were to go back into your yeah. selection, would you perhaps take that risk on him and, and, and just have him there for those moments, like the last few moments? Yeah. It's a very good question because I actually thought to myself, the one guy who probably would have bumped people off in that game uh, because they tackled, they tackled Cam, Cameron back, they tackled Ulrich back. One guy probably would have would have bummed them, would have been him. But as I said to you during the week, if we got an injury in the first minute and he had to play 75 or 78 minutes, I wasn't sure that he was good enough to, from 10 weeks out. You know, I read an article this week about Leinster playing ring rows after being out for 10 weeks. And then I'd be sitting here going, you know what, guys, I'm sorry. I played a guy who wasn't fit. So, yeah, it's not a, it's not a, there's no exact science. The one exact science I will tell you is we will be there next year. That I can tell you. Cool. Thank you, everybody.